Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering heart failure in the pediatric patient. Specifically, I'm going to be going over the medications and some nursing interventions that are important to know. Now, I have not finished my series that I'm doing on the um, cardiac congenital disorders. However, I'm taking a break from that to go over this. But I promise the rest of those uh, cardiac congenital disorders are coming soon. If you haven't watched them all already, the ones I've posted so far, make sure you go back and watch them. I've covered all of those cardiac congenital disorders that are acyanotic slash heart failure disorders. Now, on the next segment, I'm going to be covering the cyanotic disorders. But for now, we'll talk about heart failure drugs and some important nursing interventions that you guys need to be familiar with. Guys, please, you know what I'm about to ask you to do. A like this video. Like this video now so that you don't forget. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. It's been a couple days. I really haven't posted um, much on my TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, but I'll have some videos up soon. If you haven't checked them out already, I have lots of videos up. If you want to get some passive learning going, go and watch my videos on either TikTok, Facebook, or Instagram. All right, guys, let's get started. Take a look and look at what it says. So this is diuretics used in heart failure. And look, I put three exclamation marks next to the no. That means this is super important for you guys to know. Let's look at Lasix. La, 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 Lasix makes you la, la, lose potassium. So this is a diuretic that... Um, will possibly drop your potassium. And remember, guys, potassium has a very narrow therapeutic range, 3.5 to 5. 3.5 to 5. Anything outside of that range, that can cause that patient to have cardiac dysrhythmias and all other types of issues that we want to avoid. So whenever a patient's taking a Lasix, they're taking furosemide, we're going to be looking at uh, the potassium level. Look, it says Lasix furosemide it blocks the reabsorption of sodium and water in the proximal renal tubule, and it interferes with reabsorption of sodium. Remember, guys, sodium and potassium, they have an adverse relationship. So when you see that sodium down, you expect to see the potassium up and vice versa. Look at the comments. Drug of choice. When you guys are studying, whenever you see something is the drug of choice or is the treatment of choice, it's important for you to know. So when it comes to that pediatric patient with heart failure, what's our drug of choice? What do we expect to be ordered for this patient? Furosemide, Lasix, that is a drug of choice in severe heart failure. It causes, it causes excretion of a chloride and potassium. And look what they put in parentheses. Hypokalemia may precipitate digitalis toxicity. Very important for you guys to know. That's on HESI, that's on ECLIS, that's on ATI. Don't say I didn't warn you. Care management. What are we going, to, we going to watch out in regards to this medication? Whenever you guys get a test question and they give you a diagnosis and they give you a medication, right? If you have no idea what that answer is, think safety. Look at the different answer choices and say to yourself, what would keep my patient safe about this medication? Even if I don't know what this medication is, what looks like a safety precaution? right? So if you have no idea what to choose because you don't even know what the medication is, look for an answer choice that has something to do with keeping that patient safe. But anyway, let's look at the care management. I'm not going to go over all of them. I'm just going to go over the ones that tend to show up the most for testing. But guys, I don't write your exam. So any of these can be on there. Make sure you know all of them. You're going to observe for dehydration. Well, that makes sense. This is a diuretic. It makes the patient lose fluid. So of course, we're going to watch out for dehydration. And last time I checked, Fluid and electrolytes, isn't that a priority when it comes to physiological integrity? Remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you have that pyramid and everything on the bottom is what's most important that falls under physiological integrity, right? Fluid and electrolytes, nutrition, sleep, rest, um, vital signs, uh, hemodynamic status, all of those things fall under physiological integrity, what's keeping that patient alive. So watching out for dehydration, that's huge, okay? What else? Observe for the side effects of the medication, such as nausea, vomiting, autotoxicity, patient having decreased hearing. Maybe they might hear a ringing in their ears. They might have some tinnitus. Hypokalemia, that's a problem. Remember, the therapeutic range for potassium is 3.5 to 5. Okay, and we know that um, furosemide can drop that potassium and cause hypokalemia, which in turn can cause a whole bunch of other issues, most importantly, cardiac dysrhythmias dermatitis, postural hypotension. 
That makes sense because if the patient's getting rid of all their fluids, that means there's less fluid within the vascular space, which means the blood pressure would drop, especially when they change positions, when they go from a resting, sitting position, and then they stand up, right? That can cause dizziness, that can cause orthostatic hypotension. So you're going to teach that patient to make sure that they uh, change positions slowly, that they dangle. You're going to encourage foods high in potassium. And that makes sense because we know that uh, this type of diuretic will drop that patient's potassium and we can't afford for their potassium to be dropped more than 3.5, right? So we're going to encourage foods high in uh, potassium. May, we may give them potassium supplements if needed. By the way, I put a star next to that because that is a test question you I've seen over and over and over and over again. Make sure you know it. Um, you're going to monitor for chloride and acid-base balance. You're going to observe for signs of ditch toxicity. Very important. Observe, well, let me stop right there because we're talking about furosemide. Now let's move on to diuro, which is another type of um, diuretic. And it's chlorothi uh, chlorothiazide. Um, it's used less frequently because remember the drug of choice, the drug we expect to be ordered for this pediatric patient is going to be the furosemide, right? But it, um, diuro can also be ordered, but you don't expect to see that ordered as much. It's uh, less frequently used, causes hypokalemia and acidosis if given in large amounts. Watch out for that. And last is, is the spironolactone, the aldactone. That S in spironolactone stands for sparing, stands for saving. Saving what? Potassium. So here we are. The drug of choice is Lasix, where the patient will lose potassium. But here's another type of drug that may possibly be ordered, and it does the opposite. It saves potassium. It could cause the patient's potassium to be higher than five. Remember, the therapeutic range is 3.5 to 5. So spironolactone can cause that patient to have hyperkalemia. Take a look, has potassium sparing effects. You're gonna observe for side, side effects such as skin rash, drowsiness, ataxia. That's kind of when they're walking like they're drunk, right? Ataxia, hyperkalemia, I put a start. Well, I should have put a start next to hyperkalemia. I highlighted it, make sure you know that. And do not administer potassium supplements. Why would you do that? If this is a diuretic that already increases your potassium, why would you give potassium supplements to increase the potassium even further? And I told you anything out of that range of 3.5 to 5 can cause that patient to have, high, um, have a cardiac dysrhythmias. So that's important to know. Let's take a look at some nursing interventions. Um, this is a case study about a care plan, I should say, about a pediatric patient that has heart failure and they're going over some, you know, clinical manifestations, I want to focus on very important nursing interventions that you need to know that has been seen on tests over and over and over again. You're going to weigh the patient on the same scale at the same time. Let me tell you something. The best way to measure a patient's fluid status is not INO. It is not a skin turgor. It's daily weights. You are going to weigh that patient every day in the morning, before they eat, in the same type of clothes, on the same scale, on the same type of scale, okay? Because that weight is very, very important. That's going to let us know um, what the next treatment plan for that patient is going to be. You're going to document the results and compare to previous weight. Has this patient gained weight? If they gained weight, you think they got fat all of a sudden? No, they're holding on to fluids. That's a problem. We're going to have to notify the healthcare provider. This medication is not working as efficiently or effectively, right? Or are they losing weight? Are they getting rid of the fluid, which is what we want to see happen in the patient with heart failure? So that's very important. Another nursing in intervention that is very important, you want to offer small frequent feedings. Um, the reason you're giving small frequent feedings, this patient has heart failure, which means their oxygen demand is already increased, right? And you don't want to make it worse. That patient will get tired very easily. So you don't want to give them large meals because let me tell you something, eating is work. It takes oxygen when you're eating. That patient's going to get tired. So, and you want to uh, keep that patient's nutritional intake. So instead of giving them three large meals where their stomach's full, that diaphragm is pushing up against the lungs, where their lungs can't even expand the way it's supposed to, and all type of other issues going on, you want to give them frequent but small meals. That is important. 
maybe on another video, I'll go over the clinical manifestations and I'll explain why you'll see those manifestations. But for now, I want to focus on the nursing interventions. So more nursing interventions. You want to um, elevate the head of the bed at 30 to 45 degrees. Let me tell you, this goes across the board when it comes to breathing. Whenever you want to have a patient maximize their chest expansion, you want the, the lungs to expand as much as possible, you're going to elevate the head of the bed. The lower that patient's head of the bed is, the more their diaphragm's pushing up against the lungs, the more their abdominal girth is pushing up against the lungs. How are the lungs supposed to expand with all that stuff pushing up against it? But when you elevate the head of the bed, it allows the lungs to expand more. OK, remember the pathophysiology, what's happening is heart failure. This patient's already holding on to all this fluid. So that's important. You're going to administer humidified um, oxygen just to decrease um, any respiratory efforts that patient have or um, excuse me, dec decrease any respiratory distress that patient may possibly have. Um, suction that patient if they have an ineffective cough or if they have thick um, uh, secretions. You want to get rid of those plugs. That's very important. I felt like there was one more thing I wanted to cover with you for this video. And maybe not. So guys, that is it for this video. I went over the drugs. I went over the most important nursing interventions. That's not all of the nursing interventions. Those are just the most important ones I wanted to make sure that I cover with this video. Now, I promise coming up on my next videos, I will cover the uh, cyanotic congenital disorders along with these clinical manifestations and more nursing interventions for your pediatric patient. So this was a short video, guys, but it was to the point. Please let me know what you thought about this video comment please comment that really helps my algorithm it helps my video show up on more pages on youtube to help my channel grow uh don't forget i have audio lessons available for you on my website nexusnursinginstitute.com i have not forgotten about you guys i see in the comment section you're asking me when my next live review is going to be i'm not sure yet remember soccer season has started so i gotta go by them so as soon as the next schedule comes out i'll know when i'm gonna have my next review i'm hoping to have one about every month for you guys um i think it'll be a big help. I think it'll be a big help for you guys, but we'll see how that goes. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and you guys will catch me on the next video.